Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on today's roundtable, again, we have the usual suspects. We've got the Nightcap Meister, completely sober, Scott Bossman. How are you? I'm great, Mark. How are you? I'm great. It's always good to see you sober. And of course, yes, we've got the, the technician, Eric Peterson, back from a snowboarding slash skiing trip with the family. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Happy to be back. Yeah, very excited to see how the business survived um, that trip. We've got the most feared woman in the country, if not the world, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm great. How are you, Mark? I'm good. I'm good. And then, of course, I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you, man? Good. Great. Happy to be on. I'm happy uh, that you're on because I know you've been working hard on a new Geek Flicks show, which um, is, I don't know, when, when is that thing going to launch, Tate? I, I think the middle of the month, middle of the, this month, I guess that we're in now. I guess this is going to be played in March, right? Uh, well, yeah. So, so next week. Yeah. So Danielle said about a week or two. Yeah. So the, uh, the trailer for that is phenomenal. And uh, just a little tease, you can see Tate in bike shorts, which is always, always a treat. <laughs> and last, but certainly not least, you know, you love him, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And most importantly, if you're on automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek, the, the brain, the professor, Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How's it going with you? It's good. Good. Just um, a little reminder that today's podcast is sponsored by none other than Flight School and Flight School Live. Learn more about how we're going to take you up that land investing mountain quickly, safely, and get her done. Either in three days or 16 weeks. Learn more. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Schedule a call with the Nightcap Meister. Scott Bossman or the Zen master, Mike Zeno. All right. So our first topic is one that's really, really near and dear to my heart. Snowboarding versus skiing. Okay. <laughs> Eric Peterson, you want to talk to us a little bit about your trip? Sure. So we had a, um, a father son ski trip with school. Um, I took my oldest who is, 13 as of uh, this past weekend. And uh, we went to Winter Park, Colorado, and spent uh, three days skiing and snowboarding um, with uh, a few others from school. So um, it was a good time. Okay, great, great. And who in the family went snowboarding and who in the family went skiing? <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be me. I went snowboarding. My son, um, Elijah, skied uh, mainly because his other friends were skiing. But, uh, but yeah, I think I was probably uh, the only one in the group that was an adult that was snowboarding. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, before we go to the roundtable and discuss that very controversial topic, <laughs> how did the business how was it? Like, did you do a deal while on the slopes? Um, did you stress test your, your team? Like how did, how was business during those, during those three days? Yeah. So, um, business pretty much, um, went as, as normal. Um, things were happening ads were being posted. Um, you know, sales were happening, et cetera. Um, I, I did sell a property while I was, um, I don't know if I was skiing or snowboarding at the time, uh, but certainly while I was away in Colorado, I did uh, collect a down payment for a sale that um, I think we, we finished the documents uh, when I returned, but nonetheless, um, we did do a deal then. And uh, there's actually something in my business I'm, I'm working on um, kind of taking off my plate and that's, that's a lot of the, the lead follow-up. Um, so it wasn't ready to be handed off before I left on that trip, but I've got another trip 
uh, coming up here in a couple of weeks. And the goal is to have that um, off my plate before I'm um, gone again. Great, great. Where'd you get the sale from? Uh, buyer's list. The buyer's list. Look at that. Indeed. So my deal of the week went out as, as normal and um, it sold last week. So actually it sold twice. So uh, the first, first time it sold was before I left on the trip. Um, that buyer later canceled um, after he looked at the property further, decided he didn't want to proceed. Um, told me I could remarket the property. I did that and uh, sold it the second time uh, to an existing customer, actually. Wow. Nice. Scott Bossman, you know what I'm thinking? Dude, buddy. Dude, buddy. That's a great, that's, that's, that's a great sale. That is a great sale. And there's nothing better than being on the powder and making that, that, you know, sort of passive income and getting that down payment and, and building that just, it's a good feeling. Um, how present were you, were you able to be, were you able to completely, completely present, um, and sort of unplug or were you kind of thinking about business the entire time? Were you, like what was your anxiety level? One to 10? It was, it was very low. Um, I didn't think much about the business at all. Um, as I said, you know, I was still doing lead follow-up. So I did that on a couple mornings, uh, before we left. But aside from that, I really didn't do much in the business at all. Um, my team kind of kept things rolling. Um, so, so yeah, all went well. Did you want to hear the numbers on that deal? Yeah, let's hear it. So that property was purchased for six fifty. um, sold on terms for about 1100% return, uh, total sale price of just under 8,000. Pretty good, dude, buddy. buddy. That's a nice deal. Hey, what's, your, what's your takeaway on that? Yeah. Uh, you know, nothing but praise. That's awesome. I mean, Eric's been working for how long to be able to live that lifestyle. So, you know, my hat goes off to him that he was able to unplug, have a deal go through, enjoy some time with his boy and, you know, hit the slopes. Just nothing bad to say here. This is just a huge success story. I think this is what everybody who's listening to this call is, um, is looking for. They're trying to replicate this. And it's cool to see my friends living their dreams, you know, living the dream. It's amazing. Absolutely. But if you were Eric, would you have gone snowboarding or would you have gone skiing? You know, I, I don't know how to ski. I only know how to snowboard. So uh, I got Eric's back on this one. I'm snowboarding, but I probably shouldn't do either. I'll just put that out there. That's because you're 15. Scott Bossman, how about you? <laughs> yes, I do not know how to snowboard. I only know how to ski. So I'm a, you know, back in the 80s when I was skiing downhill, did snowboards even exist? Probably not. So I learned on skis and uh, I enjoy downhill skiing for sure. So I would have chosen the skis. I thought you had a my ski boy, slope in front in your front yard. It, what's that? I thought you had a ski slope in your front yard. <laughs> I do. Yes. There's, there's quite a hill uh, out front that <laughs> I, I could definitely ride, start at the top of the, uh, the, the Boulevard mountain and probably go down my street pretty easily. Nice. Mimi Schmidt, how about you? I'm a definite skier and I see how much time the snowboarders spend sitting or down. <laughs> My daughter tried it once too. We even brought her the wrist guards, right? It's hard on the hands when you're up and down so much. But no, I, I have it ski. I love to ski. Absolutely. Uh, Scott Todd. Eric. Wait, Mimi, what'd you say? I just said congratulations, Eric. That's awesome. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so you guys are talking about skiing. We're talking about water skiing, right? Because I don't know anything about snow skiing, <laughs> snowboarding. I don't know anything about that. Never been... Now, so for you, know, you to be a wakeboard or water ski? It would have to be a wakeboard or like a tube. We go tubing or we go ski, skiing, and I'm going tubing. That's the deal here. But if we're talking about snow, we don't know what that is down here. Well, I can tell you, I, you know, knowing Cole, and he's a skateboarder, there's no way you could get him on skis. 
he would be all over that snowboard. Probably, probably right. You know, that's, that's the thing is that um, I, I think we should go, but then I don't know, like I've lived my entire life and only seen snow, like maybe less than 10 times. So I'm, I don't know. Do I really need it in my world? I don't know. Tate says no. Amy says yes. Yeah. I don't know. Eric Mark. says no. <laughs> what what we need is we what we need is i need you guys to come down and we all go uh like tubing that's what we need to do like get on the tube and go and see who can hold on the longest <laughs> that's a good time we tube that's a lot you can see who doesn't drown oh we had a little competition in, inserted there yeah. oh my god <laughs> so the first time i, I went, would like to learn how to ski though i think that'd be kind of cool it's no, you, you definitely should. I, I, I would make the argument as, as far as a family trip is concerned, it's the ideal family trip. Number one, you're in nature. Number two, everyone's doing something fun that they want to do. Number three, there's actually learning involved, like getting better at a skill, which is a really good life lesson. And number four, um, after you're done skiing, you're so exhausted that you kind of just eat dinner and you go to bed and the kids are not on their devices and everyone's together and telling stories about this run or that run. It's, it's really the ideal, I think, family trip. Um, and what's great is that you're able to have your borrowers pay for this family trip because you've built up your passive income via land investing. Um, and you can do deals on the slope. So Eric, the first time I went snowboarding was in Lake Tahoe. And this is years ago, and I took a lesson, and there was a point during the lesson, this is no joke, I remember thinking to myself, it was just a very vivid memory, I'm going to die. Like, like literally, like, and this is before, like, helmets, right? Like, that's telling, like, this is years ago. Like, this is before they, they didn't have you wear a helmet, and I kept hitting the back of my head, falling, not knowing where the edge was on the board, and I remember just thinking, like, I'm not surviving this. But I love the fact that you have to wear the uncomfortable boots. So I really enjoyed yeah. that part. That part was great. And I, but now, like, when I started going, and I thought, well, do I want to live or die with the kids? Not, so I just keep skiing now. Fair enough. Yeah. So I think that this roundtable is really valuable for the listener. Because after you get to a certain age, right, you're kind of in that ski mode. And then when you're young, like Tate and Eric, you can snowboard and, and do all that. Just make sure your life insurance is at the proper limit. <laughs> so, I mean, you don't have to worry about me. Like, like Scott said, I snowboarded a few times in college. And now it's like we have snow on the mountains here in Vegas. And uh, the family wants to go up and see the snow. And it's like, what do we need to go up there for? We can see it down here. I mean, this is close enough. We're plenty close. It's dangerous up there. We could catch the flu. I mean, it's just, there's too many uncertainties. So you don't have to worry about me taking up either one of those unsafe recreational activities, Mark. Uh, it's great. Because I mean, I think the most risk I think I'd like to see you take is just eating out. That's well, I do that well. I do that well. Yeah. You know. <laughs> That's, that's, yeah, that's like the limit. Like no sushi. Oh, jeez. going to be cooked. No, come on. That's not fair. Sky. I had sushi yes. last night. See, I know. Sky Todd, in case you don't know what that is, it's, that's raw fish with rice. It's got to be good fish, though. They well, have oh, the Panera. <laughs> oh, I haven't been to Panera. Oh, <laughs> man. Look, I know what sushi is. <laughs> <laughs> And that's why I don't eat it, okay? Like, that's the thing is, when you really know what something is, you don't want to eat it, so. <laughs> but if we're, if we're on Panera's menu, though, you might try it, no? No, no, no. They, they, could, they could, like, put it at the Panera bread and, like, give it away, and I wouldn't eat it. I'd be like, no, I got to pay for my food. Thank you. <laughs> So the, the Academy Awards were on Sunday, this last Sunday. Um, I'm assuming that we had to stay up with our spouses and watch it. Kate, did you have to watch it? No. You didn't have to watch it. I don't watch that stuff. 
Scott Bossman? I watched it. I did. Right. And did Aaron make you watch it with her? No, I, I kind of enjoyed the Oscars. I wanted to see Lady Gaga and uh, Bradley Cooper sing. Mostly Bradley Cooper. I never, I haven't seen the movie, but so I wanted to hear him sing. And uh, that was quite the performance. Yeah, people are going crazy with that performance. Mimi, um, did you watch? Nope. You did not watch? Nope. Okay. Yeah, Scott, how about you? No, man, we didn't watch it. No. Mm -mm. Eric? Sounds like you got duped is, to me. Is... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't watch it either. Sorry. I, I feel like there's like a business productivity lesson embedded here right <laughs> yeah don't so, watch the oscars <laughs> yeah so that, that's three and a half hours like scott and i'll never get back right and so did True. you guys close a deal on sunday while scott and i were like you know talking to our spouses about you know can you believe that dress or <laughs> you know i can't believe glenn close didn't win Right? Uh, kind of thing. You, you can tell we're all speechless here, Mark. We're, we're shocked. Like, I don't even know what, yeah. I mean, I, I, like, I don't know, man. Like, we, can we just talk about Panera Bread or something? <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed that you'll do that. I got Dave to watch The Handmaid's Tale after your suggestion. I was able to do that, but no. He did he, did he like The Handmaid's Tale? Oh, yeah. We, we watched it. It was great. Yeah, it's, it's a great tip. It's so disturbing. Yep. So disturbing. Um, you know, I do think, though, that it does relate to um, land investing in the sense that you need to have some type of cultural reference when you're talking to potential clients so that you can actually, you know, relate with them on their level. So, for example, you can say, can you believe Green Book won Best Picture? Right? And they will most likely agree with you. And then you've got that, in common and you build that rapport very quickly and then you can start talking about the raw land but all right know, Mark. it's got boston all right mark all right, we have a challenge for you because i don't think green book's going to lead to any land sales here <laughs> so if you could convert a sale from the oscars to a land sale on terms i'll buy your lunch tomorrow but you got three hours it's, right it's, like, it's, why it's, it's, it's it's a rapport builder. They're going to say, want to do business with people the Oscars. we know, like, and trust. And can trust has, you know, some, some cultural awareness. Like, can you believe that one? <laughs> I don't think you can do it. Scott Todd? I'm going to say I'm not buying it. Not buying it. Like, for, first of all, Mark. I mean, I'm not being stereotypical here, but like most of my customers, like I'm not sure they even know what the Oscars are, honestly. Like they might, okay, like they might, but they're probably watching like, you know, uh, I don't know, hunting, hunting television or the Swamp Man or they're reading Reddit's Florida Man or something. They're doing something that's like. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, they they're they're not they're not dialing into the to the artsy community there. So I don't know. I maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't have as sophisticated buyers as you do. No, I think our buyers are pretty, pretty cool, <laughs> actually. I think my my favorite story to tell one of my buyers was um you know about one of my buyers was that what one day uh, you know, we, we had a coaching, we had a coaching student that, uh, was, was a, um, was an oral surgeon. Okay. And, you know, he was, he was very polished in everything he presented. Like it was all about looks and very polished. And I'm trying to tell him, I'm like, that's not going to work because our customers are not polished people here. Like they're not. And I told him, I'm like, listen, just before we, you and I got jumped on this coaching call, I got a call from one of my customers and I couldn't understand them. I couldn't understand them. I'm like, man, I don't understand what you're saying to me. And finally, out of frustration uh, and, and with every sheer amount of effort he had, he's like, 
hold on. I got to put my teeth in. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, I got you now. I'm with you. So that's our customer, man. Like that's my customer. You know? I don't even know what to say to that. Eric Peterson, can you just <laughs> fill the silence? On the podcast, please. <laughs> well, it just got even more silent. So I. <laughs> uh, you guys are killing me. I will say n- that's not all of my customers. That may be some, but it's not all. Yeah. Amy, how about for you? I get some artisans here and there, truck drivers and artisans and charitable folks, folks that want to build charitable organizations. That's um, interesting. Yeah. Uh, Scott, how about you, Bossman? Yeah, I think m- my customer kind of runs the gamut. I, you know, I have uh, people looking for higher end land who can maybe afford a little bit more, and I got people that are uh, excited that they can pay eighty-seven bucks a month for land. So, um, you know, it runs the gamut, and the challenges in your marketing trying to speak to whatever customer is appropriate for that land parcel. Okay. So Scott, you would not use the Oscars as a rapport building hook. It would not be on the top of my list. No. <laughs> but do you feel like you and I have built a stronger rapport with this topic? Oh, I, yes. I mean, could our rapport get any stronger, Mark? I don't know. I mean, it's not Zeno level. Right. Uh, you, you guys you guys feel this mark scott bossman love affair once again like we i thought we i thought we squashed this thing many many months ago and yet it's back like it's resurfacing what? yep because you, show you showed up man like you showed up just the get off the call like mark all giddy that bossman's here again yay bossman's here i was gone yeah. last week I, I actually while scott was was talking i i wrote a haiku <laughs> about, about the nightcap meister and i'll send it to you uh later bossman so excellent um before the listeners unsubscribe to the podcast i do want them to just know we do value them and uh want to thank them and hopefully you are getting value out of this podcast even though sometimes we digress into sillier topics i feel like this was a a sillier podcast but we're going to go back on track now and we're going to ask Mimi for the tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, maybe a quote, something actionable for the Art of Passive Income listeners to go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. Hopefully the listeners have now understood the perils of snowboarding and the time wasting of watching the Oscars as it has absolutely no effect on your business whatsoever. Mimi? Okay. Um, I love this website. I think this is so cool. It is called the Colorado Hunting Atlas. And I guess in the, in the comments, they'll put the link. Um, you guys have the link. If you go out there on the left side, it's a GIS map. You can click the game species that you want to check out. And it lists the maybe eight different uh, animals, right? And uh, you just click on it. You can see their summer range, the winter range, uh, the migration paths. So um, all over Colorado, it's super cool. Um, I have a friend looking for land. I can't wait to send him this. He's going to deploy for a year. And I know he'll spend this year finding his perfect place in Colorado and using this link. That is very, very cool. Very cool. Eric Peterson. I love it. Love it. Nightcap Meister. Yeah, I like it. Tate. I'm using it right now. Uh, this is going to become uh, something that I use on a weekly basis, I think. Very cool. Yeah. Scott Todd, do you, I remember, and I almost long for the days where the group would sort of chastise the tip of the week. And do you miss those days? Uh, no, I don't miss those days at all. Like, you like, the, know. like the dark ages of Eric Peterson's tip of the week. No, no, I think, uh, I think we've done well by moving on beyond that and uh, turn, turning over a new leaf. And, 
man, I, can, just think back. Like we used to each have to give one yeah. until Philip Ma squashed that. Philip Ma. Yeah. Thank goodness. To Philip. Yeah. Absolutely. And now Mimi gets to do them all. So it's all good. And well, now this, this is a tip like, that my Mimi's on fire is, though. Look, this is a tip that that I can actually use in my business to build rapport with my customers. Not yeah. Green Mile or Green Book or whatever it's called. I 100% agree. And I, I think that that dig right there is what the podcast <laughs> is missing. Yeah. I mean, we, we got to okay, have. So he's setting it up that you guys are going to stop being so nice to me on these tips of the week. And you have to actually rag me on the ones that you think are bad. I mean, no, not, not at all. I just, I just, I just like, I want to be kinder and gentler to Eric. But like there's like that part of me that just kind of misses like the whole jot not pro <laughs> reading. Right? Where like we could all agree. <laughs> Scott Bossman. I I just love it that we're all getting along. I think it's great. I do too. <laughs> I think it's fantastic, actually. And um again, I want to thank the listeners. Um please learn more about passive income without renters, without rehabs, without renovations, without rodents, just go to landgeek.com forward slash training and learn more about flight school. Um, we're getting her done. We're getting her done. We're getting her done in three days or 16 weeks. You decide. But I promise you by the end of that training, you have your machine getting set up. You'll have mailed, you'll have marketed. Ideally you will have a deal done. So, um, Please do that. Also, please help us out and subscribe to the podcast, rate the podcast, review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at melangeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. All right, Tate, are we good? We're good. Scott, Bossman? We're, we're excellent. Excellent. Mimi? Great. Scott Todd? We're good, Mark. Eric Peterson, the technician? We are good. All right. Well, let's do this. And, and by the way, uh, Bossman, I, I really love that hat. <laughs> Go Cubs. Bossman, you know. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> One, two, three. Let's love what, what was that, Scott Todd? I just said, let's love on Scott Bossman. I don't know. <laughs> but why not? Why not love on Scott I, Listen, I, that's why I changed the mantra from today, from Let Freedom Ring to Let's Love on Scott Bossman. I mean, why not? I'm you touched. Know. You're so great, Scott. Bossman or Todd? Bossman. Bossman. <laughs> what? More what? love for Bossman? Well, even you said it. Just following direction. Oh. I, I think it's interesting that only Boston and I watch the Oscars. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> I'm I'm so, I'm sort of going into like a uh, a big bowl of shame right now. <laughs> okay, Mark. Let me ask you a question. T today's Tuesday. <clears throat> Yesterday, did you watch The Bachelor? He did watch The Bachelor. Of course he watched The Bachelor. Come on, Mark. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Now you've taken it too far. That's a low blow. <laughs> no, no. I'm, okay. I'm just simply asking. That's it's a valid question. Did you watch it, The it Bachelor? Is, I'm not saying it's not a valid question. I'm saying what it implies. What? what? Like, I know what it implies. What does it imply? You know what it implies. No, it, I don't. That's why I'm asking yeah. what it implies. You know what it implies. Tate, did you watch The Bachelor? It's, it's basically no. saying that my... My television viewing habits lack depth. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just curiosity. Did you watch The Bachelor? You know what? I, you know what I have been watching, by the way. If you want to elevate the conversation a bit, The Crown on Netflix. Ooh. Yeah, and I will be speaking with a British accent going forward. <laughs> and the, I, the I proper like queens. Do you, can you get anyone to watch that with you, though? There's no one in my family that would get anywhere near that show. I'm the only one. Mimi, my, my wife and I love it. 
<laughs> and Scott Todd, next time I see you at boot camp, I'll have a rose for you. <laughs> this is going to be as good as the Halloween episode. Oh, jeez. We better saying? end it. We better end it because our viewers yeah. are tanking right now. I know. <laughs> Uh, um, for, for you know, speechless uh, I, I can't but mark li- listen there's like some british sit uh like cartoon or something pippa the pig or something i don't know I got, oh I got, yeah yeah I, yeah well they they said that pippa the pig i guess is from england and like all the american kids that are watching it are now forming british accents <laughs> because of it so yeah. you know That's it would right. surprise me if you formed one from watching the crown yeah, I was at Starbucks the other day. And I think I, I heard a five-year-old say, "Mom, where's the loo?" <laughs> well, I'm and just like, walking like in. you know, like you know, and, and the mom was like, "Honey, the toilets are over there." I, I I like walking in places and saying, "Hello, Governor." That's what I like saying, but you know, that's <laughs> best I got. Yeah, at Buckingham Palace, we don't say Governor. Okay. Listen. I don't know, Mark. I don't know. But can we go back to my question? Did you watch The Bachelor? <laughs> okay. By the way, Tate's just going to drop off. Yeah, I'm done. Like, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> I'm asking yeah. a valid question. I want to know. You he know did. the answer, Scott. He, he said yes already, I thought. I don't think he did. I don't it's think he did. I, Come on. Okay. You know, you know what? I don't, when I talk to you, I don't always say, oh, how was Panera Bread, Scott? Because I know you don't go there anymore. I know hey, that was from the days. That hey, Mark, was from the, the, the days. It's, it's okay. You don't have to be hostile. And the reason I'm asking is because I too have been enjoying The Bachelor. Like, <gasps> what? Yeah. What? Yeah. The mic right. drop moment. What? That's right. That's right. Except last night's was a little on the boring side, you know, but eh, we'll see what the finale holds. Did you guys hear that when they're like out on a date eating a meal, that they don't even get to eat the meal? They eat the meal beforehand, and the meal is just for the show. What? That's ridiculous. Yes. yes. What's his name? Uh, Bobby, the country uh, DJ that was on Dancing with the Stars, right? He, they interviewed The Bachelor, and he said that those meals that they show on the date, they don't actually eat the food. Well, that's ridiculous. What a waste. Yeah. Oh. So they do bring them Panera bread? Probably. <laughs> Wow, I, I have to tell you, I'm I'm shocked. See, man, like it's okay. See, see what I'm doing here is is I'm getting Bossman's out at this point because you and I have this connection over the Bachelor again. So, oh, okay. You mean so much competition lately with you, Scott's had. <laughs> listen, listen, uh, Mark. Uh, this is, I don't know. Here, here's a great story about Bossman, though. Here, I, I this is what I love. We, you, me, and Bossman, we're on the Peloton. We're, like, competing. Bossman goes off and he does this, like, climb ride thing. I don't know which – I think you did – I think Bossman did it first, then you did it. And then I went on there and I did it. And, like, I, okay, like, I did well. Okay, like, I did – I performed better than the, than the, the other two. Yeah, er, Eric, me and he t- see, see how he throw, he slides there was out not much no, humility. Hold on, hold on, hold so on. So competitive. So then Bossman – like, I don't say, like, I smashed you guys, but Bossman reads into it, like, eh, yeah, he beat us, Mark. And so then he's, Bossman says, hey, look, why don't you go ride first, and then we can see what you did, and we'll beat you. And I'm like, okay, no problem. So I go, and I do it, and I deliver my personal best on this thing. Like, I got the personal record on it. I'm like – I don't know where he's going to end up, but man, I'm going to beat him. I'm going to beat him. I'm going to beat him. A week later, like I'm waiting, I'm waiting with anticipation. Like a week later, Bossman comes in. He's like, check the rankings. And I looked and I'm like, oh, I still beat him. No problem. Ah. Well, then yesterday I went and I looked on the bike and I noticed that he beat me because what happened was, as more people came into the to the ride, I got bumped down. So like, I was originally like 1100th, he came in at like 1300th, and I had gotten that bumped down to 1700th. I'm like, what? My world was shattered yesterday. So I had to like, <laughs> go do it again. And here I am, man, I am like, I got it tiered so I can see Bossman and me, and I'm like, oh, Bossman's beating me, more power, go up. <laughs> 
And like, and then like I'm dying and then boss, I'd go down, Bossman comes back up again. And I'm like pedaling as fast as I can. I am not going to let him win. And like three minutes in, like three minutes are left. I'm winning. I'm like, I got this thing. And out of nowhere, he like sails past me. He ends up with like 10 more watts of output than I have. And I'm like, what? what? How did that happen? And uh, I did improve off my last one, which I ended up being like 1500. But man, I was like, and I was, I was like already seeing the victory. Boss man, be you. Nope. Had to quietly slither away so nobody would know that I tried it again and didn't win. Yeah, I'll tell you, Eric's uh, tip of the week uh, a few weeks ago was this book, David Goggins. Uh, was it Nothing Can Hurt Me or Can't Hurt Me? Can't Hurt uh, Me. Can't Hurt Me. I'm, I'm almost done with it. And when you l- listen to that book, you read that book, and then you work out, like, it's insane. Because this, like, but then there's a point where, like, I look at the heart rate monitor, and I'm like, well, am I going to die? Like, is this possible? And I'm like, well, he survived. But then he's, like, talking about his resting heart rate at, like, 30 beats a minute. And I don't know. So I, I feel like at some point in time, after one of my rides, Peloton's going to call me and be like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> they probably won't call you. They probably no, won't. Send an ambulance. Do they have settings? They, they, they should. They should have an ambulance yeah. standing by. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I can't. I mean, yeah. I, I have a feeling the, the two of you are doing some type of uh, peed before your workout. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> right. Yeah. But you know, there should be like an asterisk. No, let, let him notice here. Notice how quiet Tate is. Tate's like, shut up, guys. You don't even know. You don't even have a clue. He's being very, very political in this. He's like, listen, amateurs, come, come, come. I'll show you the real deal. I mean, it's just, we would just want to remind the viewers that you guys ride inside. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, Scott can move the peloton out to the lanai. And yeah. that's that's where it ends, Mark. This podcast yeah. is not over. Yeah, yeah, I mean, digressed completely. I mean, that, you we, can't come back off of that one. I don't know. I I don't think so. I, it's just a good ending point here before. Can we just cut know. this whole section out? No, <laughs> not at all. To like, let's love on Scott Bossman. <laughs> Seriously. Uh. But if you're if you're still listening to this by by the way at this point we'd love to know please please email us <laughs> and just say listen to the bonus content can't believe Tate is still showing up for the for the roundtable podcasts and and listening to you guys talk about the Peloton and not just walking away in complete disgust I don't know all right thanks everybody.